This is the Appliance Alliance Podcast, where we are elevating the appliance industry, one podcast at a time. Hey guys, and welcome again to the Appliance Alliance Podcast. I am your host with the most equipment zach Ryder from chicago and illinois alongside of me just like every other week the man with the plan he needs no introduction but i give it to him every week and he introduces the guests mr tk cousins what's going on everybody i uh, hope everybody had a good week this week uh so we have a very special guests plural uh this week Um, As most of you already know, we are highlighting women in the industry this uh, month of March. And um, very special woman with us tonight. And she was kind enough to bring her better, or or she is the better half, her other half with her. uh, Mrs. Susan Brown and Scott Brown of Appliantology and Master Samurai Tech. Uh, We're super excited to have them on ever since... We started the podcast. Uh, they were the guests that we wanted to get on here because uh, Zach's a huge appliantology nut. If you followed on Facebook for more than a week, you've heard me talk about appliantology and Master Samurai Tech courses. So uh, thank you guys for coming on. Um, we're really happy to have you guys here. Uh, most people that follow the, Alli- the Appliance Alliance already know who you are, but for those that don't, why don't you just introduce yourselves a little bit? Hey, Zach and TK, great to, thank you so much for inviting us on your show, really appreciate it. And I'm Scott Brown, and beside me right here is my my cohort in crime, Susan Brown. She's my wife of over 30 years. Mm -hmm. And we run both Master Samurai Tech, our appliance tech training site, and appliantology.org, our appliance tech support site. And we'll be maybe talking about those a little bit more tonight, but... And we have run an appliance repair business since about 1996. Yep. Yep. The year Sam was born, who now works with us. And <laughs> yeah, Sam's a point man on appliantology. And, and uh, yeah, and he used to run service calls. It, actually, all the kids used to run service calls with me when they were kids. Yep. Yeah, so. you guys are you guys are kind of monsters um, in this industry. I know when I got in eight years ago, that was the first thing I did. I'm like, how can I learn more about this? And I found this appliantology and uh, I haven't looked back. I buy it for, for the team. Um, it's, it's been a great resource and we just appreciate that. So you guys, you definitely know what you're talking about. Uh, you've been, you've been doing it a long time. Um, and, and we'll get more into, into Scott's story. I feel like a lot of us, um, who've been around, who've looked at it, have have heard a little bit of Scott's background, um, but we don't always get to hear about Mrs. Samurai. So, <laughs> um, what what kind of? I mean, my wife would not work with me. She's like, man, I ain't working with that idiot. I I just I can't do it. You you do you, but I'm doing what I'm doing. So, how did you kind of get dragged I didn't into? Feel the same <laughs> you you come kicking and screaming too. Well, I, it it happened so gradually. I didn't know it was happening. She, I, I, I lured I, her into it. She was, so it's like it's like taming a wild horse, right? You know. So when when Scott actually started doing in home appliance repair, he was doing a, another little business to start with. But then when he shifted into full time home appliance repair, I had three kids under the age of five at that time. And then as they grew up, I started, I homeschooled them. So at first Scott was really doing pretty much everything. I mean, you were answering the phone and I mean, there was no way I could answer phones with three little kids in the house. Yeah. It was, I had the, I had the bag, the old days had a Motorola bag phone. Oh yeah. They big were big. Bag phone. <laughs> and, and I'd answer the phone. I'd be out running, running the truck, answering the phone with the right. Motorola bag phone. Pull over the side of the road and book the call. Yes, ma'am. I'll get right out there. So I started out just doing the bookkeeping. And then as the kids got a little older and I could count on being able to answer the phone, I started taking over answering the phone. Um, So it's interesting. You take the kids out with, you know, customers can be, especially when you're a blackhead, customers treat you really nasty just because you're young. Some can. Some can. Some can. Yeah. When you, if you're a blackhead, as you start getting gray hair, like 
we all have, uh, <laughs> people are a little more respectful. It's kind of interesting the way that works. But what I found was back when I was a blackhead, and I, I've got gray hair, so I, I wear a hat all the time just because it's cold. But uh, <laughs> but so I, when I was a blackhead, I'd take one of my kids with me out on a service call, and people were nicer. So it was just kind of one of those. Yeah, you describe it. They kind of like, you could tell they were getting a little irritated, but they kind of keep shifting their eyes towards one most of my kids. Of, most of they'd get irritated by what I'd quote them for the repair. But not, <laughs> they weren't unhappy with my work. <laughs> so <laughs> so they keep it's it going to cost what? Well, the appliance only costed $200. Well, it's like, oh, my welcome on this. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, sorry, I derailed your story. That's all right. No, so uh, yeah, <laughs> gradually I became the full time CSR as as you know, you you sucked me into it, you tricked me into it, <laughs> and um, which was a challenge. It, it's probably uh, being on the phone is not something I am naturally good at. Although <clears throat> I was raised in the South, so I could draw on that <clears throat> friendliness that was drilled into me. <laughs> <laughs> growing up and um i enjoy problem solving so that that worked well i well plus as you know uh, you know you work in appliance repair just like being a cop or anything else that works with the public you deal with the whole slice of humanity i mean for everybody from like the menches to the schmucks i mean it's that whole spectrum right and so you deal with it on the phone as well and, and some of those people she, they'd have her in tears sometimes yeah. And it takes it takes a while to get that sort of sort of professional veneer built up. It yeah, took I was, a few years. I was just gonna ask, um, cause I I my CSR has told me, man, this guy was just like a jerk on the phone. Yeah. Like I was that close to hanging up on him, like and and then I get to the house and the guy's like sweet as pie, and I'm like, has that kind of been you guys' experience with that? Like they just they think because you're a female on the other end of the phone they can say whatever I think, I think that happens occasionally i've never felt like that happened a lot it cuts both ways though you'd have people who were sweethearts to you on the phone and i go in the house yeah. and they're like literally screaming at me when i quote them the repair price i had one guy literally screaming at me goes upstairs and I'm down in this laundry working on his dryer. He goes upstairs and I hear him screaming at his wife and I hear stuff being thrown around and I hear her, I hear smacking sounds and yelling. And that was like your worst service call ever. That I was, think. wow. That was one, that's yeah. a story though. <laughs> yeah. I'm so, out. so yeah, I think Scott is right. You know, it depends on the person. Yeah. Some people. They act differently with a CSR yeah, than they do with the tech. Or with a woman, you know, right. they're, they're not gonna like right. start cussing and stuff. But yeah. others, I mean, I, we live in a uh, area that has a lot of retirees, so it skews older. <clears throat> and I don't get this much anymore, but I'd say, you know, more back in the nineties, I would get a little bit of the patronizing thing or patronizing, like, um, you know, well, honey, maybe if, if they were Southern, they'd say, honey, maybe you should put me on with, you know, the boss. It's like, they didn't necessarily trust what I was yeah. telling them. And, and I think I was young enough and inexperienced enough to not be, comfortable just being assertive and forthright but that comes with time <laughs> it comes with time and crustiness yeah it took, it took you a while to get there but you did we uh we, the, yeah I've it, go ahead, go ahead with you. my sister as well um you know she's got more experience in i who i found my found my csr on a plantology by the way um and the she, She's got 20 some years experience. She used to be a uh, work for Viking and do all these different things. And she knows her stuff. Like she's sharp. Um, but for some reason, when they call, like, oh, I want to talk to a technician or I want to talk to the owner. And, you know, you just, one of those things. But um, I, I, I think, uh, you know, from what I've seen, just, you're not just the CSR, but you're really, really hands on. You've become, over the years, really, really hands-on with Appliantology and MST as well. Like, you're at every webinar. I was on the webinar this morning. I was driving, listening to it. Um, when you were talking about uh, TCOs and different things on dryers, 
and you're really hands on with all the aspects of it. I think that's awesome and just really, really cool how you guys work together. How do y'all, how do y'all balance that though? Like your, your work life balance. How, how, you know, is that a, a tough, I know it would be tough for me if my wife worked for the, me. The balance, I think, is one of those uh, mythical, ethereal <laughs> goals that people strive for but never actually quite achieve. Seriously, I'm not being sarcastic. If you're self employed, it, it you're all in. You're you're totally committed to the business to keep it running because you don't know where your next customer is coming from. You're always having to work for that next customer and always want to make sure that the people who are connected with you are happy. So you're all you're working. I work at all odd hours. Uh, my my sons and Susan, we work at odd hours. She tries to cut it off a little bit more for her sanity, but I'll get up like sometimes I wake up at two or three in the morning just because I do because I'm thinking about stuff. First thing I do, I'm on appliantology, making sure, okay, are these are these questions answered? Do we have outstanding manual requests that Sam hasn't answered? You know, I'm, I'm checking up on stuff. You you're, you, you got to do that. If you're running a business, you, you got to check it. And make, who else is going to do it? Who else is going to make sure stuff is running? If it's not you, then who? If not us, then who? If not now, then when? You know, that, that kind of thing. So bring bring my Southern preacher thing. So. I love it. So we are talking yeah, this one. I was going to say, we've had to learn to respect each other's workflow because I am definitely somebody who I like to either be in work mode or off work mode um, within reason because in, and I will check in at a couple of different times after, you know, when it's getting late to make sure there's not a student who needs something urgent and, you know, otherwise things can wait till the morning. Um, so Scott knows that about me that I kind of prefer to keep to, you know, a little bit better, more work hours. Um, so if there's right. conversations we need to have. She needs you know, that. I mean, for me, right. it's like, it's, I don't need to keep the business at arms. It's, it's like, I'm all in. It's like, I'm all connected into this thing. And it's like, I'm, I'm actually genuinely interested in it. It's stimulating. It's interesting. It's intellectually stimulating. I like to, when I'm, I, there are problems that are posted at Plantology. I like to see how techs are thinking about things either correctly or incorrectly, because that gives me ideas to train on for webinars. So it, it's it's just endlessly fascinating for me. So it's not like there's, a, it, you can't keep it at an arm's distance. You gotta be all in, you gotta bring it all inside of you. It sounds like you guys are perfect for each other because you, you balance each other at either end of the spectrum. That's so cool to hear. I, yeah. You know, we've heard it somewhat in, when you guys were running running your podcast and and, somewhat throughout the group or whatever, but, um, it, it's really neat to just to hear that interaction, um, in, in person that that's kind of balanced. I love that. Um, we we're talking a little bit in the, in the pre-recording. Um, so you kind of reined him in, in creating the MST courses. So how, can you walk me through the creation of those courses oh, and what that kind of looked cool. like? <laughs> can give the story with the how it how the whole business morphed from doing like when a plantology first started the model, the online business model was affiliate part sales and that whole thing changed and then there's the story when I was walking up with the owl you want to tell that story sure and then then I'll yeah. get to your point um, this is how this is the genesis right. so, of Master Samurai Tech so we've been running. I mean, you'd been running online appliance forums and various forums that eventually became Appliantology. It was all just like on a lark, part-time stuff. It was just fun working with other techs and talking Started with them. in the 90s with bulletin boards and then yeah. groups and this and that. And finally, right. it landed in the, the shape it's in now at Appliantology. Uh, Which itself has changed a lot over the years. 12 year. years ago, almost I think. Almost 15, almost 15. Oh, almost 15. Yeah. But people were starting to ask, you know, do you have any organized instruction? You know, not just the the forums are great and whatever. And right. we were just at a crossroads. We knew we we it was time to take our online activity up a notch. But we weren't sure what. And it was winter. It was January 2014. It was actively snowing. He was outside with our German Shepherd tossing around this canvas frisbee type of thing. And I, I was right because our business model that we were doing online with affiliate part sales had collapsed. Yeah, had Google, utterly collapsed. I Google, mean, Google basically Google, and DIYers who that was a focus of our of our original audience at Appliantology way back then. And that whole business model collapsed, and so we'd have DIYers going to Amazon buying it for two bucks cheaper, coming back to Appliantology bragging that they bought the part for two bucks cheaper, right. and though we helped them figure out what was going on. 
that whole model just collapsed. Right, and that, and that, that had been supporting a Plantology. The, all the those, server fees right. and all the stuff that goes into keeping that site on online. So that whole thing changed and we had to change with it. And like so many people do online, doing an online business, it's always changing. It's everything's in flux, nothing's stable. You don't set it in concrete and then hope it keeps going forever. It doesn't work that way. So that whole thing had collapsed and we were like in a quandary. We were like, I'm either going to shut it down or do something different. And so, so this was the story. He was that outside she's throwing this Italian. frisbee with our dog who was terrible at catching anything. <laughs> <laughs> he tried. He tried. And so Scott threw it again. And suddenly. It went high. It was, the Frisbee went high. Mm -hmm. Go and ahead. Suddenly an owl swooped down and caught the Frisbee. There's no BS. This, this is for real. Talons, and then flew up into a tree. So And stood there up yeah. in a tree, high up in a tree with this thing hanging down from his talons, mocking me. <laughs> and for some reason that gave me the idea that. Wow, I could start an online appliance repair school. This is the mystery of his mind. <laughs> this is how it worked, though. An this owl is... stealing a Frisbee, so an teach, <laughs> well, teaching our dog. Yes. That's what the owl we figured was trying to do. He's trying to teach our dog, this is what you're supposed to do. To this you're day. To catch it. We have this owl. I am so, crying uh, right now. I'm laughing so hard. That is hilarious. To this yeah. day, we have this owl. Which I know it's symbolized. Not, it's not things. the same owl. It's not the same owl. We didn't kill this and, and entomb it. It's just a ceramic owl. Um, but but yeah, I know this, uh, owls mean a lot of weird things. But it, it, in this context of my experience and story, it was like this became the symbol for the school okay. internally. So then, basically, we also then discovered that there's this reasonably new software out, learning management LMS, learning management systems that would be a perfect way to deliver instruction without having, you know, to produce DVDs, hard copies of stuff and all that. Yeah. So then basically Scott spent that spring and that's kind of a dead time for applying to service calls here in New Hampshire, uh, that sort of late winter, early springtime. He just like, all day long, da, 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 on his old laptop. I'd sit on an old laptop in a chair right behind me, just sitting there banging stuff or out. Recording videos and and created what was the fundamentals course. We now have upgraded. It's called the Core Appliance right. Repair Training Course. So then my job was to go behind him, <clears throat> excuse me, and try to figure out if I could learn what he was trying to teach and. I happen to be, I think, a good fit for that because I've got a technical background. I have an engineering degree, but I never did the appliance repair. Yeah, you know, I didn't. She CSR. didn't know much about electrical. So. I, I just, yeah, I knew, I knew a smattering of stuff from being a CSR. <clears throat> so I kind of had to learn it too. And so, I mean, we had the funniest conversations all day long. I'd be trying to figure out voltage and current and voltage so drop. She, and she had to learn basic electricity <laughs> and circuits and Ohm's law, just the same, exactly what we teach right. in core. And she had to learn all that stuff herself because she didn't know that her background's chemical engineering. They, chemical engineers don't learn circuits and stuff. So, uh, so anyway, yeah, our dinner conversations were often me trying to <laughs> figure this stuff out, and then I went into the courses and kind of added more to draw that out, or or I would suggest that he do another video mm. that explained um, something better right. and showed something better. Yeah. A concept or whatever voltage drop or whatever it is. Yeah. So without me, the courses would be a lot harder. So be, if any of you <laughs> out there <laughs> who already thought they were challenging, you can thank me for the fact that they're not even more so a little more yeah. approachable. Now you're saying that he teaches like a level way above the rest of us. Like that's not attainable. Well, that, and that was, I mean, that was seven years ago. Yeah. So you've learned a lot of how to step things out right. a little more gradually. You know how, when you know something really well, you, you presume that the people you're talking to already have some level of back and they don't. And you can't, you gotta, you gotta really break it down and make it bite size. You can't ask people to swallow an elephant. You gotta ask them to take, you swallow an elephant one bite at a time. And so you gotta break it down in little bite sized chunks. And that's what she helped me do. Right. And part of that was because your original audience <clears throat> that you were thinking of were techs who were already working. At a plantology. But like never, a, I was thinking right. of a lot of applying techs at a plantology who'd already been at it for a few years. So but originally- didn't really the, have good training or Right, originally the courses, the courses were designed for techs who'd already been at it for a while, already understood what a meter is and how to do ohms <laughs> measurements, what everybody keyed in on. Um, I, I wish that's just too bad, but um, anyway, that, they knew kind of that what that is all about. And but so I had something, some baseline to start from, 
and uh, and then I could expand their horizons, as it were. But then we found out that once we get launched the courses, that actually we were getting rookies, you know, new people totally new to the trade coming in. So we had to break it down even more so that they could we could bring them along and and carry them through. Uh, yeah, I feel with, like especially that's, with basic electricity. I feel like, I feel that's, like that's something that's we're something. really missing. Like there's just not many good choices to send a new technician to school because I. I personally would rather like bring in a kid that knows nothing and train him from the ground up. As long as he has the right attitude, um, everything else you can, you can teach some of that if they have at least yeah. a little bit of aptitude towards it. So yeah, you're actually better off taking somebody, uh, you know, a noob, a rookie and training them the right way. What we found is difficult just with working with multi-tech operators and things like that. You, you get a tech with a few years experience, they know a little and they're very impressed with a the little they think they know and they, they become untrainable because of the whole pride thing and hubris. And um, yet they, they have no idea how deep the rabbit hole goes. And there are a lot of cool ways that you can check stuff and test things and, and troubleshoot that where you can work smarter, not harder. You don't have to tear the whole beast apart. Get down there and do the own check on the hate element. You know, th that kind of thing. That everybody That's what everybody's thinking. It's like, no, you can be clever about this. Use electrical equivalent points and do your checking from the control board or from the timer, from a con minimal disassembly for troubleshooting tear down is for the repair and that's that's the thing especially with electrical stuff just trying to get that across to people and that's a difficult thing if a tech has a few years experience and they're used to tearing things down and well that's wanna, their comfort and that get down and do yeah. the ohms check and everybody wants to do the ohms check everybody's an ohms checker and we're trying to get people away from that as well because think about it, you have to trust when you're at the circuit board doing tests right that you're actually connecting to the thing you want to connect. You have to. to trust the schematic and your instrument, and you can't be second guessing your instrument. If you're second guessing your instrument, get a better instrument. Okay, get get a fluke or something, get a field piece, whatever. Don't go with cheap meters and then start second guessing your meter. That's like a pilot second guessing his his instruments on his panel here. Oh, I don't really believe that instrument, so I'm gonna fly upside down, and then they end up crashing. So, and that's what a lot of techs do. You got to trust your instrument. Uh, you can't see it, but I am crying over here, audience. I am crying. I love how passionate you two guys are uh, um, about the industry. I, I, I do. Like, if, if we had more people that were that passionate about elevating the industry, man, this the industry would be totally different. Um, kind of keying into that, um, how have things changed? Like what, what has changed since you guys started doing this? Like, I, I know a lot has changed, but like walk us through the things that you've noticed in, in, in these years um, doing this. Well, like one thing that's changed, like when I first started this, you know, almost 30 years ago and you go to a manufacturer's training, everybody else in the room was ex-military, including myself. We, we all learned basic electricity, electronics, avionics my, in my case, uh, in, in the Navy, everybody, Army, Air Force, whatever. Everybody was ex-military who was, who was doing this before. And the manufacturer trainings themselves, they would actually teach on circuits. Because, and, and everybody could follow along because everybody understood how circuits work. And they show you, here's how this circuit works. And, um, and you got a voltage divider circuit over here. And, and, you know, we got loads in series over here. We're feeding neutral through this, through this drain pump, whatever, whatever was going on. And everybody could follow it. What happened was over the years, my theory, these older military guys started retiring and they were all a little bit older than me. I was still a blackhead back then, but a lot of these guys were older than me and been doing it, doing it. Um, these guys all started retiring. New guys started coming to the trade without any military background, military training in electricity area or without any kind of formal training. This is not bad, but this is the reality of the situation. It's not good or bad. It's just what is, right? So, and they started coming in. And so they started, and when the manufacturer would try to go over this stuff, it's my theory, and these guys would be lost, huh? What, what? Why are you showing me these lines? Show me how to take it apart. Why are you showing me all this academic BS? Show me how to take a door off. I want to know how to change the pump. Why are you showing me this scribble on a page up there? <laughs> you know, so, and then you get that kind of stuff. So the manufacturers had to dumb down their training to meet techs with it. Why? Because the manufacturers are interested in getting their stuff fixed. They're not interested in training techs. They want to make sure their stuff can get fixed and they got to meet techs where they are. So that's kind of what happened over the years. And so they basically dumbed down their training. You'll notice even in service manuals, you go back to an old uh, Maytag dependable washer service manual. They're talking about watts on loads. They're talking about using voltage as a, as a, um, uh, a surrogate for continuity. They're talking about using amps to check for watts. 
Nowadays, what are they talking about in service manuals? Everything is about ohms. Why? Because that's where techs are. They, all they understand is ohms. Well, that's what DIYers do. That's that's amateur hour. Professional techs are not are, are work about working on live circuits because with, especially when you talk about AC, if you're just doing ohms checking, you're not checking those components, switches or loads. You got to check them live. You got to check amps. You got to use voltage as a, as a surrogate parameter for continuity. But but everybody's all about making that meter go beep beep. You know, on continuity. And, and that's just kind of where they are. And so manufacturers, I think, had to meet people where they are because the whole point in a manufacturer-funded service department is to get their stuff fixed. It's about satisfying that customer, making sure their stuff is fixed. And if the techs are parts changers and ohms checkers, well, they got to meet them where they are and make sure that they at least can take a panel off and change that pump out. By the way, I'm from Georgia, so I can talk with a Southern accent without it being it's not, insulting. It's not an insult. It's not an Southerners. insult. I grew up in Atlanta, so <laughs> <laughs> I went to University of Georgia. So, <laughs> uh, one thing that I that that I've gotten into several pretty fun debates on the uh, Facebook group about is you know I I, I learned at Appliantology. I've been on Appliantology since I got into appliance repair and you frequently would talk about ohms checks and and use the phrase ohms lie and things like that and i would use that phrase quite frequently the guy that trained me taught me the exact same thing ohms lie um and one of the things that came up quite frequently in the group oh. would be oh, i'm sorry i'm talking too loud uh, one of the things that would come up in the group would be you know the the difference between a amp draw check a voltage check and an ohms check and which one is the preferred method and i would always say you know a live voltage or an amp check draw check would always be my preferred choice mm -hmm. um, because ohms lie um and you know and i would go into detail about how a you know load can fail uh, a, a component can fail under load and everything that i've been taught and like people just couldn't grasp that they couldn't grasp the fact that you know just because this temperature sensor is reading proper ohms outside of the unit doesn't mean that it's working properly or this load or whatever you know what i'm saying whatever the, the the component is you're checking doesn't necessarily mean it's good when there's you know electrons being blasted well that's the whole point what you said there and, and particularly when we're dealing with, the, with ac world why because there's higher amperage there's more electrons per second passing any given point in an ac circuit in general DC circuits, it's kind of, and this is where a lot of people with an electronics background, they come in and they get tripped up when they go in the AC, when they start working with AC stuff. Because in DC, the DC world, it's not as big of a deal. Um, you know, they're used to checking the, the ohms across, a, you know, doing a, a forward reverse bias check across a transistor or diode, whatever. And, and that's like SOP. That's, that's, that, that's how you can determine definitively that a semiconductor device has failed or not. You can't do that in the AC world. Because stuff changes when there's electrons blasting through it. When there's a lot of electrons, but stuff gets hot. And so the deal with ohms, you can use ohms. Specifically, I, I qualify with um, it's good practice in general, AC or DC, but especially with AC. You can use ohms to tell if something is bad. Something checks bad on ohms, great. You've you done found it. You found the problem. Something checks good, you know, quote, good on ohms on an AC component. I'm talking switch or load. You can't conclude that it is quote good because it checks good on ohms. You've not proven anything. You go put you go put, apply voltage and there's electrons blasting through that circuit. It changes. Uh, if you got a loose connection, it's going to heat up and it's going to its resistance will increase. I mean, so you, you you've got to check stuff live. You got to get comfortable. Professional tech should be comfortable working on live circuits. You should know enough to be able to work on a live circuit without you know getting the bejeeber shocked out of you. You'll still get it periodically. It only hurts for a little bit. You get over it and you go back to it, right? <laughs> so, and you so, stay perfectly normal yeah. afterwards. <laughs> it has no effect on <laughs> your personality. I, I have two more questions for sure. Um, so what was the origin of the samurai name? Like, how did that all come about? Oh, that was some um, interesting story. That came about with my first uh, back injury, back surgery in, in late, uh, like uh, late uh, 90s. Um, I was laid up and that's when I did that first brain dump on at, over at fixitnow.com. Because, you know, it's the kind of thing, 
it's an it's a skill that goes stale if you're not actually using it. So I wanted to do a brain dump so I wouldn't forget it once I, my back healed up and I was able to get back in the in the truck run service calls. Well, so I, and I and after a while I started getting sick of it and she right. said. So- He's always enjoy. He's always been kind of on the cutting edge with computers and communications. I mean, when our children were born in the '90s, we registered their names, uh, their URLs. So with the last name Brown, that's pretty hard to get. But they each have that is there. So we were a very well, no, online that, the, community. The first brain and, dump that I had online. I know. So um, he used to have a lot of fun doing this stuff. All the various communities things he do on the computer. So well, no, at first he started that. doing it with the, the appliances, and then he was starting to just well, it was get it was very straight. It. it was very straight. Right, that's it, what I'm didn't have to. A, okay, didn't have the sam, samurai stuff. And then. he was just kind of like, oh, I don't know if I want to keep this up. It's kind of boring. But I said, Well, have some fun with it. I mean, he, he's got always had a wacky sense of humor because it was either do something goofy with it or shut yeah. it down because it was boring. And so he started, you know, just having more of a persona on there and came up with Samurai Appliance Repairman, which was inspired mostly by the old uh, John Belushi skits on the original yeah. Saturday Night Live. Samurai Delicatessen. And, and Samur- so I did have, I think, TV repair. Yeah, there was a TV uh, repairman, yeah. So it just was a goof, you in know, fact, just to have fun. In fact, Appliantology was inspired by Frank Zappa. Okay. Have you guys ever heard the album Joe's Garage? It's quite wicked. I mean, if anybody's a, <laughs> I don't recommend it, especially if anyone's a, a Christian and going to be offended by sens- sensibilities. I'm a Christian myself, but you know, I still listen to it because it's good music. It's just, technically it's very good music, and he's funny. And so, to me, if something's funny, it kind of stands on its own. I give kind of give it a pass, and it's right. just it's just so funny yeah, as yeah, or, a bit about a paleontology, right. or, which was a play on Scientology. Okay. Right, right. Yeah. It's play on Scientology. So I, I don't, I don't recommend it. Might it's, it's definitely going to be offensive lyrics and things. I don't <laughs> recommend people go listen to it. I own the album myself. I listen to it periodically. It's just funny. I love Frank Zappa. I don't. I know people have a lot of problems with him, and uh, but I give him a pass because he's funny and the music is excellent. And so he, uh, the Appliantology was kind of uh, inspired by him. So what's funny is when we did go to actually create the what is now mm. the Master Samurai Tech Academy. We, we got some advice on, you know, what should we name it? We needed a logo, and that was beyond our pay grade. So we got some help from a, a marketing person. And they poked around a little bit, and they said, you've got to keep the samurai name. We are like, really? Because we thought they'd say, oh, it's too goofy. You should come up with something more straight. And they, like, they said, everybody knows you as that. Because <laughs> at this point, you'd been Samurai Appliance Repairman for about 15 years online. Almost so, 20, yeah. Um, so, Yeah. So it just stopped. Actually, Summer Appliance Repairman started early 2000s, so almost 20 years. Right, but this was 2014, I yeah. think, when they made oh, that recommendation. Right, right, so. right. Yeah. I, I remember you used to have the little uh, Lego samurai guy. I still do. That's the, that's the, on the oh, when yeah. I do a webinar, that's the place yeah. for my webinar. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah. Sam made, I made that. Sam actually did a whole little scene when he was a kid, uh, a Lego scene. He put together a samurai and then there, he made like this little kitchen and the samurai was coming at it with a sword and a hammer. <laughs> that was the samurai's way of fixing it. <laughs> so, oh, it's around here somewhere. The customer was upset with the, uh, yeah, where is the Lego man? I love it. Whenever I was watching the YouTube videos in like my living room, my kids would see that Lego figure and they're like, Oh look, you got a Lego figure up figure on there and I'm like, Yeah, that's a samurai that's a samurai Lego figure. They'd love that. Yeah. See, most people enjoy the humor, but we get occasional, very occasional people who will just say, I can't take you seriously. No, <laughs> like, no, actually they write in can't take you serious because that Lego man <laughs> in all caps yeah all caps you know <laughs> life is too short to be serious you gotta have no kidding fun. you know i mean before you know it you're old and dead so just enjoy yeah. life you might as well enjoy and what you do it's appliance repair it's not brain surgery you know it's like yeah nobody's gonna right. die if we and move around it's a little bit. fun that's why i got into this business in the first place it's fun it's a fun trade there's you go around to a service call there's always a different fun problem to solve and it's like it's not like a Oh man, no! This is a weird problem. It's like, oh wow, a weird problem. Yeah, and it's it's fun. It's creative. You get to apply your skills and and get stuff fixed. And it's always something different. Think about working in a cubicle. It's always shuffling the same thing. This is not like that. Meetings. Oh. Meetings. Oh, 
Oh, <laughs> meetings, forget it. No, no, appliance repair is not like that. You're always going to meeting with, it, meeting is at somebody's house, working with a different customer. You don't know what you're gonna find in that customer. You don't know what you're gonna find in the appliance. You open it up, oh, wow, mouse chew, all, mouse droppings all over the place. Well, whatever, but that's cool. It's kind of interesting, <laughs> you know? It's, oh, this is just, this has been a blast um, to kind of unpack uh, the master samurai world it's this has been a ton of fun have you had fun tk I, I i love it i mean i've been a big fan you, you know since day one in, a, in appliance repair and um uh, my, my whole thing with with everything appliance related is, is just to keep learning and the exactly. amount of knowledge that i've gotten i'm doing the, the core class now um through mst i i i I procrastinated for six years. Um, this is my sixth year in business. I procrastinated for six years, and I just bit the bullet and said, "You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this course. I'm not very, I, I'm not putting as much effort into it as I should, um, but it, it is an awesome course. Like when I just got through the basics that that you know y'all teach in the very beginning, I was like, man, I learned stuff that I didn't know." And I've been doing this six years. Mm -hmm. So, like, for those people out there that are like, oh, I've been doing this for 40 years, you're going to learn some stuff in that in that core course that you didn't know. The guy that trained me, I mean, he's been doing this for uh, 23 years, and I'll bring stuff up to him that I've been learning, and he'll be like, yeah, I never thought about that, or I never, you know, cool. considered it that way. It's just a lot of good information. Wow. It's very technical. I mean, it is nitty gritty you know um and, and with i'm just getting into the parts where you're starting to show the videos of the appliances um which is really exciting so i can't wait to you know blast through the course and i'm definitely not blasting through it but i appreciate everything you guys do you guys are both at appliantology we got a ton of webinar recordings over there and and so anybody who's a, a tech member at appliantology i encourage you just one one uh, webinar recording a weekend that's all just watch one of them a weekend and you'll get an education right there it goes beyond the coursework in a lot of cases so it's just a nice supplement yep. and enhancement we get into some take deep dives into some of the technologies out there triax pulse width modulated fans i mean just all kinds of stuff and we get even got a whole series on refrigeration sealed system thermodynamics i mean just take advantage of that stuff. The main thing is it's, it's fun to get this information, put this information together. It's fun to put it out there. And it's fun when people actually learn from it and up their game. And that's, and that's awesome. cool. That's its own kind of, Absolutely. this whole trade is fun. I mean, whether you're going out and doing service calls or whether you're online teaching and learning, it's, it's, it's all about fun. So we promote the crap out of you, but our, and you know, we get new audience members all the time. So, um, Mr. Samurai, would you mind giving us the 30 second elevator pitch between what Appliantology is and what Master Samurai is? Because if we ask Scott, we're going to get a, a doctoral thesis. <laughs> they, they, they didn't keep it short. So. <laughs> yeah, well, and thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that you guys uh, spread the good word about what we do. And we think it's really cool what you guys are doing. We're all working together to raise the tide in those boats. Thanks for um, having us on your awesome podcast, by the way. Really, really yeah. looked at some of your past episodes. You guys are doing a great job. So MasterSamuraiTech.com is where our courses are, our training courses. So we have Core Appliance Repair Training is our flagship course that everybody should start with, whether they are experienced or not. And then we have four more advanced courses that go into more detail on specific appliance technology and also more practice with troubleshooting. We also just launched a new CSR course that gives CSRs just enough knowledge about how appliances work to be able to communicate well with both the customer and the techs. So you go to Master Samurai Tech and get your training, and then you join appliantology.org, and that's day-to-day -day tech support. So there's tech forums, there's a download section where um, you know with file sharing, you can get the documents you need for your jobs all those webinar recordings. There's like 50 some odd recordings right it's, now. It's uh, oh, about 80 yeah. hours worth. Right, and so students at Master Samurai Tech do get a free six month membership at Appliantology and they can even earn a longer one if they get certified. So the, mm -hmm. the sites are integrated in a sense, but 
training courses at Master Samurai Tech, day-to-day -day tech support at Appliantology. I am very excited about the CSR class. We actually signed our CSR up for that. Great. Um, because I'm out on the road and and I just I don't have time to sit there and and teach it. And so she's been going through it and she's really enjoyed that. I have a feeling okay. you had a, I feel you had a pretty big hand in that. Well, that was basically my baby. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it's mo all the stuff I learned over the years. She did it all. Having him to be able to pick his brain, you know, and 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 then helping him to develop the courses I learned even more so I was just finally in a really good position to to pull this together yeah. so I'm hoping it's really helpful for good a, job, lot, a lot of people out there yeah we we greatly appreciate like just everything that you guys have done and we are going to have to have you on because I do want to go into more of the world of Scott because there's just a wealth <laughs> of knowledge there um and, and and this has just been a blast to have have this conversation with you guys and we're, we're honored to have you on the podcast it's we're it's the, been an we're honor the new to be kids here. on the block we'd love to come back it's been a total honor to be here with you thank you so much for inviting us we uh, yeah. really appreciate it so uh, great to talk with both you guys great to uh, work with you guys and see you all at apply ontology and and um this is great to be uh, there's a lot of great techs out there and it's great to be associated with them you you two especially Thank you so much. Well, guys, that has been the Appliance Alliance podcast. And you're probably going to have to watch and listen to that again because there was a lot of information in there. Um, make sure that you check the link in the description. As always, we have the uh, referral link for 10% off a Master Samurai Tech course. Make sure you take advantage of it. Those courses are phenomenal. Thank you. And as always, like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends and like, let's make this industry better. Mm -hmm.